Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. This is our maiden voyage on to LRN.FM. Uh, we are proud to be on here. We are also syndicated on Voluntary Virtues, JREV, IPM, and of course, go check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. I am Ram Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And today, our special, exciting guests are none other than the Seditious Sirens. Wow. We have uh, Renee Freelove Kate and Anne, my rebel mistress. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, before we get into that, uh, I'd like to invite our audience to go to rebelloveshow.com slash watch. You can see our beautiful faces on the cam. Uh, instead of just listening to our wonderful voices. And you can still jump into the LRN chat room, the infamous chat room. It's also on that page. So please go check that out. Go watch us live on camera. Anywho, all right, a uh, couple of little updates to our show before we get the ball rolling with our beautiful, gorgeous guests here. Uh, first off, uh, Liberty Forum. Liberty Forum is coming up this March. March, uh, what, 5th uh, through 8th? 5th through the 8th nhlibertyforum.com. Uh, we will be recording live there uh, every day uh, during the events at 2.30. So please come down. Watch, go buy a ticket. Go watch us live uh, at uh, Liberty Forum. Uh, hopefully we'll be better than we are on, on YouTube or uh, LRN. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll be able to edit, edit stuff out and then, too. You we, know? Don't, we don't edit stuff out. I mean, we could conceivably. Yeah, but we won't. But we won't. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're largely uncensored. Yes. Yeah, and then you can party with us, too. Because we are hosting the party at Liberty Forum. Uh, we are taking up the mantle of a podcast team hosting a Liberty Forum party. Uh, it's going to be at the Quill on March 7th at 10 p.m. When that night. When's the commercial coming out? When's the commercial? Oh, man. We're not like, supposed yeah. to say yeah. anything about no, that. No, no, no. Good, it's a All good right. thing you brought That's that fine. up because someone I'm should have had it edited <laughs> by now. Dude. So, yeah. So I'm editing this really cool commercial that the four of us filmed. Oh, this was like a few days ago, right? And uh, we, we just filmed a silly commercial for the party, and I think you'll really enjoy it. The first place that that commercial will appear when it's done is the Rebel Love Club group on Facebook. So if you're not in that already, definitely get in that one. I love the exclusivity of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long will we be on there as an exclusive? I don't know. Maybe a day or two. All right. Anywho, I also have uh, a couple talks uh, at Liberty Forum, or technically Alt Expo. Uh, you know, they're only like 20 minutes long. But nonetheless, I'm still doing two. I'm actually doing them with the artist formerly known as O-Girl. Uh, you guys can probably imagine who that is. Uh, one on polyamory and the other one on secession. Very odd mix. It seems to be what I'm, I'm activist for, that and apparently a uh, right-to-travel activist, which I don't want to be. And you're a Tinder activist. A Tinder act. Yeah, look at you. You're here <laughs> You're here in the Shire because of, of my Tinder activism. Uh -huh. You guys yeah. have got to be kidding me. Tinder activism? Mm -hmm. yeah, we we met on Tinder. Thing. For real right There's now? There's no shame yeah. in our Tinder yeah. games. He triggered her move. I triggered her move. Oh, yeah. He, he, <laughs> Trust he's me. He's still triggering it. Oh. Of course <laughs> I'm, <laughs> of course I'm still <laughs> triggering it. Um, I love it. Yeah, get on Tinder. Get people to move to the Shire. Just like, See, like all you got from on. man, you just got to put it like a fifty mile radius, and then you get all the ma the the mass holes. <laughs> not, and you're not one. Don't he, call he, them that. One. He should host <laughs> like sessions where he teaches people how to do Tinder correctly. Well, we're gonna have a Tinder panel at Liberty Forum uh, twenty fifth or twenty sixteen. Why why wait why wait for Liberty Forum? Why don't we just do it at, uh, <laughs> at <laughs> just do an impromptu one at this yeah. Liberty Forum? Yeah, at this at Liberty Forum. I'll just be out in the in lobby. the hallway somewhere. Yeah, in the hallway. Come <laughs> come find me. I'll give you tips. I guess I don't know. Or we can do one at Pork Fest. There's gonna well, be some really weird in, stuff though. In reality, I picked Rob up. So. Really? <laughs> wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you tell him. <laughs> how, how did you pick me up? I picked you up. We all know. Come how, on. How now. did you how did you snag him? Pray well, tell. As, oh, you need to listen to Seditious Sirens. Uh, if you do, you know how I work. I don't. I'm not afraid to make the first move. So I, as I recall, I said hello first. I don't. I don't know if that's true. I, I think that's we're true. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have and to go I back asked and for fix. your Snapchat first, and you know. Okay. That all right. The deal. All right. Okay. It does seal the deal. So I remember, and I taught you how to use Snapchat. I remember. Wow. Okay. Yes, you are correct. You got me in the Snapchat. I will give you that. So I because I I, I figured up. Snapchat was nothing more than like you know something that like uh, teeny boppers used or whatnot. <laughs> so I, I never had it on my phone, and uh -huh. then you're like, get on Snapchat. I'm like. Uh, 
uh, all right, yeah. This <laughs> this sexy beautiful woman wants me to get a Snapchat with her. Yeah, of course. I'm 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 going to do that. Oh, yeah. Don't flatter me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> 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 Anywho, yeah. Liberty Forum. I'll be at Liberty Forum doing two talks uh, throughout the week. I forget the exact times. Go check out the schedule at nhlibertyforum.com and go watch us live and come party with us that night. If that's not a reason to buy a ticket to Liberty Forum, I don't know what is anymore. Uh, definitely come up and uh, check us out there. Also, uh, we did some outreach earlier oh, uh, in yeah. the month, uh, Our, about a few weeks ago. Activism. Well, we're we, a dynamic half team. Half the Sedition Sirens were there. Renee was somehow absent. Excuse me. I live in Keene. Yeah. yeah, okay. In her defense, we, we went out at 7 in the Renee. morning. And yeah. no one gave me notice. And we're That's, all stoners, so we all got up. And like did it. That's, and I was so proud of us. Me this too. Is incredible. I actually didn't. I didn't <laughs> sleep the night before because I knew I wouldn't be able to do it. You never sleep. Yeah, you ever. never sleep. <laughs> you, you're always up till like yeah. you know. I'll, I'll wake up for work and like you're going to bed. I, I don't. Hey, I don't, buddy. Understand, I don't yeah. understand it at all. Insomnia. But, but yeah, so we did. Um, we passed out educational material um, at Manchester West High School, um, which people hate that that brand of activism. You can be passing out anything, as uh, just a piece of paper. And uh, you will get accused of all sorts of nasty things. I've uh, actually already been accused of like, oh, you're harassing the kids. Either you're harassing them or you're somehow like a pedophile and like objectifying them, which I don't see how you get that from handing someone a I piece of paper. Because I was with you guys, it just made things easier. Oh, you you legitimized it. I, I legitimized yeah. your outreach. Yeah, I, it shouldn't be that way. But yeah, no, yeah, I can see that. It, it definitely shouldn't be that way. <laughs> I think it's great because younger people are who the cops want to mess with, you know. Mm. Yeah. And the, the cool thing was, too, is that the stuff we were handing out was pieces of paper that said school sucks project dot like com. Giant letters. That school, said, school sucks. sucks. <laughs> Speaking of school sucks project, I just want to give a straight shout out. I know he hopefully he said he was listening. Brett Vinat, thank you for the cable. My hero. You are a hero. You are uh, our guardian angel for this episode. Go check out his website. School sucks project dot org dot com dot com dot school com. Sucks project dot com. Go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. He, we, he saved us with this last uh last minute heroics on the show <laughs> so, so so rob uh, you want to go forward with the story what happened when we were handing out the papers oh so we're walking up to the uh to the school all right and uh you, you see we, we knew we were kids going to come out in the witch door we didn't know which one and uh we're slowly passing out uh flyers to kids coming up uh we're getting dirty looks from like inside this office which happened i guess it's the principal's office which is like right on the corner where we're like uh handing stuff out uh, yeah, definitely an office filled with faculty members yeah, standing at the window and staring at us. No, <laughs> not, <laughs> plus, like you know, we're we're three adults standing outside of a high school handing you know handing out uh, whatever you know that they think we're handing out to kids. I know it sounds weird from their perspective. From us, we're you know we're trying to wake up people that they're propagandizing. You know, they're they're the ones that are, uh, you know, it's a whole propaganda center in my opinion. Anyways, so. Th the principal comes out and he is, he's like, I don't want to, you know, you can't be here. This is private property or school property. And, we're, and you go like, isn't this public property? Is it a private or public yeah. school? And he said, well, it's public under his breath. Yeah. 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 And uh, he, he goes, he turns to me and he's like, I don't want to be filmed. Can, I want to <laughs> have, I want to have to ask you to turn off your camera. And I just look at him like, you can ask. <laughs> and mean, he just keeps recording. Uh, yeah. Of course, I'm gonna this keep guy recording. Was, like such a douche. He just thought because he told us to leave and had like no like merit of any kind that we would just go just because he said so. Right. That was the funniest part. It's, it's like, his why domain, would we leave right? Just because yeah. he, he said so. We weren't even in the, the on the campus. We were on the sidewalk next to the campus. Oh. And there is our first break, kids. We'll yeah. be back in after these commercials. Talking about our not polyamory outreach, but the school 
<laughs> school outreach. Yeah, the man. Polyamory the polyamory outreach, outreach. outreach for that's uh, next for week. Brett. That oh, that is next week. <laughs> that's right. That's what we're doing next week. Um. Anyway, so yeah, the the principal comes out and he's he's all upset that we're out there. And I, I look at him like you know I, I don't know. For me, I view people as people. I don't view authority figures as some sort of like authority figure. You know, just because he runs a school or is a, a police officer or anyone else. I just view him as a human being. Well, it's a public school, right? So if you're paying taxes, Rob, like a good citizen, he should technically be your employee. Wait, 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 wait. I, I do not <laughs> pay taxes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, I have money stolen from me by agents of the states every paycheck. He, he should assume, though, if you're you know someone who's in Manchester that you're paying taxes and that he's your public that, servant. That he is paid with stolen funds, then yes. Yeah. Well, there's a difference. It, yeah, but in I'm his, not voluntarily he, paying anything. I'm I'm just trying to look at it from his perspective. Oh, from his perspective. Right, oh, right, yeah, right, 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 right. That he thinks that he's an authority figure. He thinks that he's God and just like what his word, his word is law. The enforcer. Do you guys he's have any enforcer. like crazy like enforcer stories from school? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm sure you guys I have remember. Probably Renee. I certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> we had this uh, one administrator <clears throat> who was scolding kids for wearing rainbow clothing saying it was unnecessary or, like, uncomfortable for the school environment, something messed up like that, and threatening gay and straight kids who just so happen to be wearing rainbow, even if they weren't wearing it for, like, gay pride purposes, threatening mm -hmm. them write-ups or suspensions or some shit like that. So I ended up having some in-school civil dis where uh, I got, like, 300 kids to just deck out in rainbow and fill the school with rainbow, and there was nothing that any of them... That's Any awesome. What grade was it. this? This uh, this was high school, so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was my freshman year. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, I was still jacked into the Matrix back in high oh school. Oh my god, so was I. I was still jacked into the Matrix in college, man. I'm I'm old in this game. You guys are, <laughs> the, you know, I'm I I, can, I thought I was like the uh, the the new guard. I'm not even that. I'm like I'm old news. You guys are the the new hotness, not me. The new hotness. Yeah, the new hotness. Speaking of new hotness, can you mentioned Seditious Sirens earlier, but you didn't really like give your elevator pitch yeah. for the show. Yes, this is your elevator pitch, kids. So you have a couple seconds to pitch to the entire planet through LRN.FM, which is probably like you know we got you know a lot of people. Real fast, how many episodes right. out so ready? far? You ready? Go. Oh, what question <laughs> are we answering first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> like our fifth episodes. episode is co no five. Whoa. Get it correct. I don't make me. We have five <laughs> episodes. Our fifth episode is coming out Wednesday. And it will also be a podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to throw some Creamy D at you, so I'm hopeful in that. Uh, oh, my God. Stop it with the Creamy, creamy Ds. Ds. What the hell is Creamy D? Creamy, Michael, <laughs> exactly. Michael W. Dean, the creamy? Freedom Fiends. Oh. Creamy D. That's our nickname for him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he he's an audio like my whole thing like, he he's an whole audio guy in regards to podcasts and stuff like that great guy he helped us with our audio on this on this show uh however uh i kind of take what he does what he did with me like the in regards to making good audio and i'm not even doing exactly everything he said to do but i'm, I'm pretty damn close I'm, I'm pretty sure i am uh anyways um whenever i run into another podcast team uh, i kind of do like the same thing uh and it, but, but it's kind of in different formats so like for you guys you guys are not doing um you're just doing youtube which is great you're doing some content that's out there fantastic and you can always take the audio from it at some point however if you're not doing it as a podcast, you're going to get like tenfold the listenership and as a podcast and an hour to two hour long link show than you are on a uh, on YouTube. Most people aren't going to watch YouTube files for a long to time. To be fair, I don't know if it's yeah. going to be tenfold because uh, they're frankly they're nicer to look at. Exactly. So I think they'll but get more video views. Well, they'll look at us for a little us. longer than they would look at you guys. Like That's everyone true. who's watching now. Well, th th this is the this is my <laughs> whole point. I and I talk. I I when um, we we are heavily video focused, so we well, would like to do both. You know, though. here here's we my like thing. We like to heavily focus okay. on both, but mostly. You. Ellen was in this room with us the other day, okay. Yeah. And I told this to her, and I'm gonna tell this to you. And I told it to her, and I won't do it right to you. You guys might as well be have all the mics just turned off. And just talking without the mics on, without it being a podcast. Because, like, for her, I can't go back and listen to Alp shows. 
There is no archive of them. There is no podcast of it. They're not on Stitcher. They weren't on iTunes. I can never go back and listen to that show. It is might as well that show never existed on the planet because I can't find it. I can't find an audio but file YouTube of it. YouTube is forever. so sad. Yeah. And I remember listening to what? that on LRN great. before awesome, I moved. And now it's podcast. gone. It's just disappeared because they didn't put it up as a podcast. Well, so, we are going to put it up as a podcast. Yeah, this week's our episode is our we first podcast. I'm not episode trying to be mean. I'm just, you, you, you brought it up. so I'm our I'm, elevator pitch. Oh, that's I'm right. I did, I, I'm not oh, I right. did ruin your experience. elevator You're pitch. Yeah. Start, start, elevator from, pitch. start from the beginning. Back to the pitch. So where do we leave off? Okay, so. The hell if I know. Okay, so we're a once a week show that comes out with exciting stuff we talk about like sex and drugs and rock and roll uh, woman and stuff and all sorts of fun feminism and how pretty we are and we put on lipstick and i mean we, we put jokes. on a good show for you we do sex drugs and anarchy i like it yeah i, I like yeah. it too sex so, drugs, um, anarchy. We, and we're luring you into a new state of consciousness that is our goal so we also <laughs> <laughs> we also just want to give the female perspective of life in the liberty movement because we live this life here with you guys too and we do you know it's fun in our different ways well in my opinion you two and i've said this before off here i've never said it on there i'm gonna say it now you two have a very interesting dynamic because both of you were introduced to this at the ground level you know, we went through our PhDs in liberty spending like five six years discovering what this is and finding this and moving here and then we're like level ten. We're all the way down there. Some and then we introduce this to you. To get here quick. Get there quicker. I took a shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like know. we went through this big winding but, maze but, of yeah. Murray but, but like Yeah, I said, Rothbard and Ron Paul, yeah. and you know, we're going down all these like you know. Like, like I said on our episode coming out Wednesday, I think that what. It's great that we came in that way because we're around so many people who've studied all these things, and that way I learn something new every day. So I feel like it's I'm, I'm there, but every day I'm learning, well, and I I, can, I get that opportunity because I don't think I know it all, I don't know it all, and I can just I can listen to all my friends around me, which is great. Well, it's crazy, it's like you know, in regards to level one through ten or whatever, how you want to look at it in regards to like you is know, this like a cult? Energy. Like, is there? Am I gonna meet like someone after a certain level? At after? level eighty-seven, you become a laser lotus and can speak oh. to Ayn Rand <laughs> from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait here's your cookie wand go on <laughs> Rob. but no i mean like most of like there's things you know better than most libertarians out there bar I, absolutely yeah you guys understand what it means to be a free human being more than most libertarians on this planet but they also know like the like building box that you haven't like you just bypassed it and but we'll come, when we come back to the Rebel Love Show, Anne's going to say how I'm so wrong on her position on everything, <laughs> because that's what she does. Love Here we go. Rob, can we talk about something real fast? Absolutely. Proper show introduction etiquette. We should all be introducing ourselves, right? These segments, right? Oh, that's right. They do yeah. that every, all the time on Free Talk. Oh, Live yeah. It's anymore. so important. Yeah. Well, I am. We are first off. The Rebel Love Show is pro pop, pro gun, pro coffee. I am Rob Mathias. And I'm Shire Dude. And I'm Renee Kate Free Love. And I am your Rebel Mistress. There Just Rebel go. Mistress? That's is that it? it? I'm, are you, are you I'm leaving are, it at that. Are you pulling a Shire dude on us? I'm pulling a Shire dude on you guys. Okay, so we're not we're not going with your name anymore. Yeah. Yes, it, are just you call me Rebel Mistress or High Priestess of the sh- oh. Oh, no, no, of no, what? No, 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 I'm high priestess. You're, she's high <laughs> priestess. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, of the Shire <laughs> Free Church. Free church. Yes. She is a priestess of the Shire, Shire Dude, Dude Church. There's a whole, that's a completely different oh, thing. Guys, we're starting churches. This is starting to sound culty. <laughs> uh oh. Culty? <laughs> I thought it already was. <laughs> it's called the Liberty Movement, people. Anyways, um, God, I have a train of thought. Okay. Um, you were going, Anne. Yes. 
Are you gonna change your name to Rebel Mistress? I am not gonna change my name to Rebel Mistress. But if I didn't tell you guys where I can find where you can find us, go like our page on Facebook um, dot com slash seditious si- should seditious sirens. Sorry, I stutter. Um, if because we were doing our elevator pitch, but right, yeah, we, we didn't kept going plug in the and location. Out. Yeah. I, I still, <laughs> I still hear you and Rob argue. Why? Why? We I never argue. We well, not other. like yeah, argue, but okay. You as your roommate, you guys argue for sure. You <laughs> argue <laughs> all <laughs> the <laughs> damn time. <laughs> no, we don't. What Rob <laughs> puts hummus on everything he eats, and <laughs> Ann thinks it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But we just argue so we can have insane um, makeup <laughs> sex. That's the only reason we argue. They do. That's that is correct as well. So. <laughs> I can <laughs> and that's just as loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we try, we try to keep it down a little bit. Sometimes, yeah, right. Uh, you do. I don't buy no it. No shame. Uh, yeah. Come on, guys. What uh, what were we talking about? Liberty? We were talking about. <laughs> 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 oh, what's wrong? You shy. Speaking of no shame, you guys on Seditious Sirens. Now I've listened to a bit of it. You guys don't hold anything back. You talk about like literally like sex and and, and everything. We we be that type of show where we can just give like a young female perspective and we want to talk about our lives as well like we don't know you ask us on the chat who the fuck do we think we are and why we don't think we're anyone but uh we have opinions and you can listen to them if you want and if you don't want to you know you guys are people who are making content and doing something yes so what are you doing all right and then hey kids listen all right they're trying to trigger the move and they're doing. I mean, they're giving a perspective on the community that no one else has done uh, from on the community because usually it's a bunch of uh, white guys in their thirties talking in the mics like I am right now, like Shire dude. Only oh, you're not. Whatever. I'm not thirty yet. Not. Th- I'm still young and vivacious. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, he he's doing it, but you get what I'm saying here. We people. are not the first. We are definitely not the first. I know you're not the first. But, yeah, you, well you're an interesting that. mix, too, oh, because so, yeah. we got a Manchester person and a Keen person right now yeah. on, on the same show. So that you got a Manch and a Keen, a Manchkin and a Keeniac. All right. In the house. Oh, it's, it's so funny that I became a Manchkin. I hate the word Manchkin, by the way. I can't stand it. I don't I use want it. A I just one. used it now. It's like the first time I've ever really used it. We know it. But we, I hate Manch Vegas because Manch, Manch Vegas sounds like a 70s porn, porn yeah. Like, movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I no. Dig Welcome no, to I Manch dig the Manch Vegas. Vegas. You go to you can no. go you can go to Keene or you can go to Manch Vegas, mm-hmm. you know, and the rest like Portsmouth sounds stupid and that doesn't sound stupid, but it's like oh it's a port, you know, and <laughs> it's a knock of a port, and you know then Concord is like it's the, okay the capital whatever, and then you go, like the Lakes region. All right, no, this is Manch Vegas, baby. That, that, oh, I, I don't God. know, I love that. <laughs> yeah, but no, we definitely need a new word instead of uh, Manchkin. You know, we should point to the uh, the laboratory of innovation that is the LRN chat room and just say, hey guys, if you can come up with anything better than Manchkin, now's the time. I believe in you. Go for it. I, I will say this though we have we've we've pulled off the going full manch, uh, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, we we are defining what that means. Yeah, compared to what does it mean to go full manch? Yes, what does it mean? Because Rob keeps saying everything means to go full manch, and I I would like for ba- you to explain, babe. babe. <laughs> <laughs> we we are living full manch. Right now, so, this is it. This it, is, we're it living it. Like our lifestyle, like you, we live a really crazy we life. Do. We have fun. We have a lot of fun. We live our lives to have fun. And yes. Every day is exciting. In the name of liberty. I prefer to go full keen. I don't know about you guys. I, I can only go full keen once in a while because let me tell you, every time I've been to keen, I've been drunk for twenty four <laughs> hours straight. <laughs> that and is the way to that do is it. Just like yeah. the normal when you, thing, I cannot hang. Wake up, drink. And when you're here, you're you're just twenty four seven full high. Yeah, that's you're, true. But like they drink like vodka at seven a.m. for <laughs> breakfast, and they're just like, I'm like, I can't do that. I can go full keen all the time. I've received Snapchats of that uh, to prove it. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as far as activism goes, uh, like the legendary Derek J, when I think of someone saying go full keen or, or Robin Hooding, like that's the first thing that pops into my or mind. Or chalk. Yeah, using chalk somewhere is full keen. Yeah, the, the chalk wars was yeah. the uh, the epitome of uh, full keen. I'd say full manch yeah. is like uh, polyamory. That's yeah, kind of the yes. epitemy of full manch. Yeah. It is. That is the joke in Keen. And yeah. uh, living in a basement. I know. Last time, the last <laughs> time, <laughs> the last time I was in Keen, um, 
I witnessed uh, Danica making out with old girl in the CAC. Wow. Whoa. And I'm like, and then someone else said, so it just went full mansion here. (laughs) 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 I'm like, um, okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. Wow, that happened? That happened. Where was I? I don't know. That's what it was like right after me and Shardy were on uh, FTL. I mean, that's full. It just depends on who you are. I mean, I feel like in the liberty movement, threesomes can happen anywhere. Like, anything can happen at any time. You never know. Oh, I, I know, babe. Yeah. Trust me. Well, oh. <laughs> Anything can go down. So I don't know. I can't associate like sexuality with either state, I guess. <laughs> okay. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So changing subjects here, people. All right. A um, couple of things coming up. I got uh, I got pulled over for a stupid sticker violation uh, here. In, basically, in New Hampshire, you have to have a sticker on your car. I didn't get it updated, so whatever. Uh, I got pulled over. I made a video about it for like 10 minutes where I'm yelling at a cop. It's on, on, on uh, rebelloveshow.com. Yeah, and I'm sorry, Rebel Mistress. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I'm just going to start calling you Pumpkin on here. Can I do that? No. <laughs> Please Jesus, do. No. Oh, yeah. Please do. All right. All right, Pumpkin. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> You can be like a Spice Girl now. Anyway, where can they find that video? <laughs> Rebelloveshow.com and uh, recorded it. Anyways, uh, I'm going to fight that. So I'm gonna, I plan to do a little video where I'm, you know, I want to lose 60 bucks. They're going to steal it from me, but at least I'm going to have fun doing it. And the cool thing here in New Hampshire, you can record yourself in a courtroom, which is fantastic. You can't do that in most places across the country. Well, but you can do, do it, yeah. I'll, I'll come and get a second angle for you. I, well, I assumed you were going to oh, be the camera person. Yeah, well, I, I, I assume you're going to have like three or four camera angles. I'm you're going to have like a ring camera. where like different cameras here. You're going to be live streaming on Bamboozer with the camera sideways. We'll put a recording device on you, like wiretapping and stuff. Oh yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Let's let's get a bunch of felonies. On. We'll go full keen in that courtroom. Oh, well, hey, <laughs> sometimes sometimes you have to go full keen. You, you do. Know? You most yeah. certainly do, because otherwise you don't catch the great stuff. You know. Well, don't Absolutely. get arrested. That would be no. Fun. Do it. Go full keen. I kind of don't want to be arrested. Yeah. Have there been any problems That's in the fun. past with uh, co- uh, cameras in the Manchester courthouse? That's a good question. If Rob you know will the be the th- first because Rob is the rudest to any, uh, like any, <laughs> like any. You, okay, he doesn't pretend to be nice. Uh, no, I it. don't. Well, because I'm not nice to, is, to, is, to is agents like, of the uh, state <laughs> stealing from me. I'm sorry. I want to. I'm a human being, goddamn it, and I'm pissed off. I'm not going to take it anymore. I can't blame you, but my first instinct is to be polite because, again, they are human beings. You, they I, I treat them like dogs. You reward them when they're good. And you reprimand them when they're bad. Well, it depends on the situation. That situation is going to be coming right back after this commercial break here on LRN.FM. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At this point, seriously. Oh man. So the no, what happened before this show? This. Like, we <laughs> we were scrambling. We had to pick up. Uh, yeah, we didn't have an XLR cable for the fourth mic, which literally came in last second because we had to run to FedEx to go get it. Well, to like get the stand. To get the, the stand at like eight o'clock at night. <sighs> We and then we know, and then we know there's no XLR cable. <laughs> Thankfully, we live in Manch Vegas, where everyone's a podcast. Where everyone has a podcast. So we just and message Brett, Brett Fanat, who's just down yeah. the street. <laughs> like, hey, we need an XLR cable. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, come over, pick one up. Like, thank you. Freaking save the show, man. Yeah, he really did. Yeah. Look how many people are in the We need to have man. him and Ali or him and uh, Carlos together on the show again. Hey, Nikki. Wait, is Nikki Darling in the chat? Yeah. Oh, nice. The show is the cat's pajamas. It's actually produced by a cat. Ash the studio cat. Like her on Facebook. She does not like to be picked arm. up. Yeah, she will. She will like, she'll tear you up. She's a crazy. <laughs> most people that she's ever seen in the chat. That's hilarious. Hmm. Crazy she said they're all here for the boobs. <laughs> My boobs aren't even showing. Dude, I know. Hey. Let's just take our shirts off. I know. <laughs> Let's take our tops off. But first, <laughs> you have to go like our Facebook page. Seditious Sirens. Hey, how many likes do you guys have on your Facebook page right now? Uh, like uh, 130 something. Yeah. Okay, if we can get to 500 likes by the end of the show, can we see something? 
Five hundred Facebook what, what, likes. What if, uh, what if Ash if Studio can get to five hundred likes on the Sedition Sirens? Likes. No, no, no. I'm Give not whoring myself out for only five hundred likes. <laughs> Give us two hundred <laughs> likes, and I will take my shirt off. Just two hundred? Renee, come on! You're supposed to be. A, a She's a terrible negotiator, more. folks. This is the time to strike. <laughs> Facebook.com/slash Sedition Sirens. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. We are here with uh, myself, Rob. I'm Shire Dude. And our special guests today are the Seditious Sirens, none other than... Renee Kate Free Love. And your Rebel Mistress. And we were talking about how I am not polite to police. You're not polite to... Or any bureaucrat for that matter. Yeah, anyone who... Yeah is threatening harm against you. But it's really funny how you do it. You used to be a lot meaner. <laughs> well, first off, I think you're referring to the time I was pulled over by a statey when we were driving up to the uh, uh, Free Coast Festival oh, yeah. from Boston. It's like whenever I'm with you, I'm so scared that we're going to get pulled over because you're like a cop magnet. Right? I get We've pulled over all the time. Ever? I've met you in like August. <laughs> We've no, been pulled over wait, like whoa, five whoa, or six whoa. Times. August? No, not August. When was it? I don't remember. It was in May. May. Yeah, May. May. Not August. Shire time's got us all screwed up, man. Yeah, man. I'll be honest. I don't even Shire, know what year it is. Man. Shire time, we've been together, like, what, three years now? Three years. At least. Oof. If not more, in Shire time. Oh, yeah. It's a long time. Hey, yeah. does Shire time exist in Keene, Renee? Um, uh, I don't you gotta know. You got to explain Shire time for our audience. Yeah, please do. Here in the Shire, time doesn't exist the way you think it exists all right when you're here a week feels like a month like two or three months feels like a year's worth of experiences from uh, your previous life and bo davis has pointed this, this out on an episode before it's because of all the amazing connections you can make with other liberty lovers in the shire so yeah. like you're getting you're just packing it all in all of these people who they're just they're just so concentrated you know yeah, I mean, one, one beautiful thing here is you don't have to spend a lifetime to build up a community. Yeah, you it's built. Yeah, it's already built. Cool. You just walk in and everyone you know knows everyone. And it's being built. Thank yeah. God yeah. for social media. Like when we were in a uh, freaking uh, market basket the other day and we ran into like a bunch of different oh porcupines. Oh my God, <laughs> everyone. I was surrounded. I turn, I turn around, there's free staters. I, in front of me, there's there's a state rep, you know. <laughs> and then uh, you you turn around and turn a corner, you're hitting another free stater or whatnot. Yeah, market Basket's like crazy. I, I Every topping. time I've ever been to Market Basket, every single time, I'll run into a free stater. Everybody's even in so the sweet lot. here. It just feels like a big family. That's one thing I love about New Hampshire. Like it's just you know someone e- everywhere you go, and I like that. I like the feeling of that. You know what's kind of crazy though? Like uh, at work, like you know people talk talk to me like you know why did you move here? Blah blah blah. And we'll we'll talk about our you know personal lives and stuff like that. Like what do you do? Blah blah blah. You know I'll, I'll drop hints about like my life and stuff like that. And like my life's exciting. I love my life here. I can't get enough of it. I love living in the Shire. I can't. It's it's amazing, and I always it's always something going on, some meetup, some parties, some whatnot. It doesn't matter where you know whether it's here or in Keene or the coast or up in the Lakes region or Concord, whatever. There's always something going on. Yeah. All right. We're always busy. Yes, <laughs> isn't it? Like it's, it, it's things like a never rare stop. moment we get to just like lie down, and even then we always have something to do. Well, no, <laughs> yeah. Well, of course we have something to do, but uh, oh, my God. <laughs> But anyways, no, no, seriously. There's well, always, there's always time for that. Well, we make we the make time, time for that, babe. Pumpkin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, this is the first time I've ever had a partner of mine on the air, so I want to take advantage of it, by the way, kids. Um, well, that's not true. Is that not? Oh, you d- I don't count Was that. Was she your partner I don't at the count time? that. No, I don't count that. Oh, God. I don't count that. <laughs> Why'd you even bring that up? Don't even bring Ayo. that up. Don't bring that up. Are we calling people out? No. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. We're all, we're an Eskimo family. Shire did... <laughs> <laughs> Sh- Shire did, did suggest that we have a nudist house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hear me out. That's how weird we hear are. Hear me people. out, hear me out. <laughs> okay. I used to I'm have for the struggle. two roommates uh, uh, back in, in California, and we had a, a rule for the apartments called Naked Cereal Wednesday. And the rule is if you eat cereal and it's Wednesday, you have to be completely undressed. 
I don't know why we made the rule. It was really entertaining. <laughs> uh, anyway, one day uh, I'm home with one of the other guys, and the third guy is coming home from his date, right? And so we decide to prank him and do naked because it's Wednesday. So we both <laughs> get completely naked, and we're sitting on the couch with the bowls like right in our laps, you know? And uh, the guy comes home, and actually, it turns out he had had a really terrible date, and we totally cheered him up. So, Naked Zero Wednesday, naked folks, bodies. bringing us all together. Well, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> one bowl at a time. <laughs> I mean, well, see, right now start it's, with it's winter. Right now it's winter, so it's kind of cold. <laughs> all right, <laughs> come summer, like it probably will be that. Well, maybe something warm then, like Naked Oatmeal Wednesday. Naked Oatmeal. <laughs> we don't even have oatmeal. You need to you hook don't this eat up. Oatmeal. It has to be coffee. Naked coffee. Naked coffee uh, Thursdays. Chocolate. Yeah, there, oh, you, there go. you go. We don't drink hot chocolate in this house. We do when there's marijuana Kahlua. in it. <laughs> 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 there you go. Now you're talking my language. I, well, I've actually drugged someone making coffee here before. Yeah. You're you're a horrible human being, babe. <laughs> so watch out, people. It was an accident. I <laughs> accidentally drugged someone making coffee. How do you I, accidentally? I, I, it was an accident. Well, it was, it was sort of an accident. It was an accident. Yeah. I, I, okay, so in the Rebel Love house, uh, we put marijuana in the food because we have pot butter and everything. So everything's usually laced. So I was making breakfast for everyone. Uh, and this pot, was at, this pot was at bacon, like 10 o'clock at night. Eggs. <laughs> Make yeah. a breakfast late at night. <laughs> <laughs> and um, coffee. So we have a guest and I ask, you know, I, I say I'm going to put, you know, pot in the coffee. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, because we're always down to get high in this house. So <laughs> I asked our guests if they wanted coffee. And I thought I made it clear that it was pot in there. Um, but I guess it didn't. And he drank it. And he was upset with me. Yeah. Because yeah. he drugged the person. Um, I was not trying to violate his nap. I was just trying to, you know. <laughs> Have a good is nap. that a violation of the nap, guys? I think it is. I think I violated his nap. I felt bad about it. I don't know. I feel like, if anything, that's the opposite of a violation of the nap. I mean, especially because it's pot, but I mean, he yeah. didn't consent to my drugging him. Hmm. I think and it, I feel bad about it. Intent's an important thing, and you didn't intend anything bad. Yeah, I didn't. you didn't intend to do that. I yeah. just I intended for everyone to be get fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't like to get that done? No matter who it is that's serving me anything... Here within the FSP in this movement, I always ask him if there is drugs in it. Especially, it's a fair, yeah. it's a fair question. Yeah. Yeah. I assume fair question. I assume most things have drugs in it, and I also assume that most people are concealed carrying. But uh, seriously, I, I usually assume that. Sounds legit. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. as they should be. Exactly. <laughs> and I also assume that they have a Bitcoin wallet on their smartphone, and if they don't, <sighs> I get pissed off. I'm sorry. I, there, if you're a good free stater, you have a blockchain wallet or a some sort of any mycelium. I don't care what it is. You have a Bitcoin wallet on your phone, and you better be able and ready to take a Bitcoin payment for something. Because I'm not giving you one piece of paper, a fiat Federal Reserve note. I want to. I'm not going to use their money uh, to buy or purchase anything from you if you're not taking uh, Bitcoin. So, or of any kind of like to exchange money. If I owe you money or you owe me money. It better be in Bitcoin, and if it's not in Bitcoin, I'm a little upset. And if you don't have a He's Bitcoin wallet on you, that's even worse. That's even worse. What, what, what is this, 2009? I actually <laughs> went and bought myself a, one of those Piper paper wallet printers. So the people who say, oh, I don't have Bitcoin, I go and I print a code out, and I give it to them, and I say, you can take Bitcoin now. I, <laughs> dear, at work... I was sitting at uh, at this lunch break at this like conference I had to go to, and literally I was just talking about Bitcoin because they know that I have I'm into Bitcoin because my car because I have a Bitcoin vanity plate, and uh, they know I they, you know we'll have a conversation about Bitcoin. And I got one of my coworkers to literally download. He's not a free stater. He's not a liberty guy. Nothing like that. You know, he's just like you know a normal guy, great guy. And uh, he downloaded a wallet within seconds, and I sent him like you know a dollar worth of Bitcoin. He sent me back like twenty five cents just to show what the transactions are like and whatnot. And he did that within a couple seconds. If a normal person can do that, why doesn't most uh, a free sir? Now, mind you, most free sirs do. Most free sirs have uh, a blockchain or a mycelium wallet on their phone. And I'm assuming because the way Renee is like looking at me as if I killed her, I killed Jazzy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, that you don't have she, a Bitcoin wallet one. on your phone, do you? I do. One. In fact, I have ha, like ha, ha. five. I have one for me. I have one for the Keen Activist Center. I have one for Seditious Sirens. So, and I have a blockchain. 
and two Coinbases. So don't you tell me anything about not exactly. having a damn Bitcoin wallet. Exactly. How many do you have? This pumpkin? is our nagging show. How many do you have, Pumpkin? I have one. You have one. I have one. Okay. And it's just for me. How many do you have, Rob Matthias? I have how a few. Many? I'm not going to disclose that how information many, on, Rob? on the air. How how many? How many? I don't have five. One, I'll, I'll two, say or that. three. More than three, less than five. I've just got a spending Bitcoin <laughs> wallet on my phone, but then I have the more important wallet, which is the Dogecoin wallet. Yes, yeah. and if you if you feel the need to get rid of Doge, which you should, because it's the <laughs> yeah. Doge is the cancer on this community, <laughs> yeah. uh, send them the by Shire all means Dude. send them to me at shiredude.com. And we'll be right back after this break. talking about activism life sex drugs and anarchy <laughs> uh and speaking of one of those things we have a uh some activism coming up here in the shire 420 at 420 on 420 yeah like a- every year they go to the state house in concord uh where all the government officials are and they smoke cannabis right on the state house lawn Yes, I went to the one last year at the uh, state house. So unfortunately, it was on uh, Easter, which really right. Unfortunately, sucked. that's well, like you still perfect. Got good no. numbers, it's like right? Jesus wants you to no, it was it was it was, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was bad timing because at the, because Ada State House wasn't open, and a lot of people oh, wanted to be okay. with their families on Easter instead of you know smoking a joint on the state capitol. Wow, it was huge in Boston. Like I've never seen so many people get together to smoke pot before. Well, bring all those people up to New Hampshire. And they were blowing it just like in the cops' faces. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful moment. Well, yeah, last year we had a state rep, right, who smoked cannabis. With yeah, you guys. what Mike Michael uh, what, Salvi, I believe. So, so I forget his name. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, yes, uh, a so state we'll rep did. So we'll be going out and handing out flyers at yes. smoke shops. Yes, that right? is th- that is a plan. We don't have a name for this this operation because we like to name things here. Like whenever we're doing some sort of activism, activism, <laughs> act, you know, it's uh, we we name it. So Shire, you gotta come up with a, a great a name. Clever yeah, name. He, a clever name. The name person yeah name? like the school outreach that we're talking about earlier was operation full keen yeah so um, for obvious <laughs> reasons if you can come up with a good name send it to the lrn uh, fm chat room <laughs> definitely yeah we so have a hashtag th- that's going on right now and what hashtag is that? go live for what oh yeah go live for what hashtag go live for what? <laughs> so if you're listening make us trend yeah, yeah. there go you go for what? share the show with a friend or we're still going on till what midnight so midnight we got another uh, hour to go let's keep the good times oh, rolling yeah. so uh-huh. renee you You've been to the 420 rallies like in Keene Central Square, right? I sure have. Like back in the day. What's that like? Back in the day. Oh, man. It was so cool. I mean, uh, I missed the really good times, which was back in like 2009. I showed up in 2011. There was still a good amount of people. Um, yeah, just peacefully assembling in the squares, smoking some pot. What kind of numbers? Like in, like 100 people? or? Uh, back in the day, there was like 100 people. There was still like 50 when I was hanging around. Um. Yeah, you can catch some of that in Derek J's victimless crime spree. There was the infamous "Give Peace a Chance" arrest. Oh yeah, oh, I saw can that we on a documentary. Sing that song at this <laughs> one. It has to. It should be like an annual thing. If there's a re- an arrest or well, yeah, no, I guess we could sing it without an arrest being yeah. happening. We yeah. have to bring back the Shire, cro- Shire, Shire choir. choir. Yeah. Oh Shire yeah, choir. the Shire choir. Well, Shire why don't choir. you? That that is a good idea. You should do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I think it's fun. I like to sing. You, then do it. Bring I'm it back. Gorgeous. Okay. We'll you got. You guys can be the seditious uh, siren uh, choir. Shire choir. I can do that. You should do that. It sounds like a great idea. I can handle that. Make sure you make it on a YouTube video as well. Another it's thing. Not, it's not activism if it's not filmed. It's true. Another fun type of activism that went on in Keene. Uh, there was. Something that Derek J brought to the table called Free Speech Fridays, which at the 420 on Fridays 
they would bring out the megaphone and they would pass the megaphone around and you could just yell whatever the fuck you wanted on this megaphone. Oh yeah, I've seen there's like YouTube great. videos of this, like Graham and them just talking about like anything they wanted, yeah. Yeah, just getting stoned and getting on a megaphone. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well you, why don't you do that? Set that up. I could. Yeah. I could. Be a, be a doer. <laughs> I am. I'm trying. We we try. At least we're doing something. And oh. we do more activism than I'm I think oh. than more people can name. Believe me. I, I've, right I've seen now, your journey through here as out. well. You think it's hard to wake up in the morning and go out and cook breakfast for you guys, do some activism, some civil disobedience. Uh, f- first off, first off, she doesn't cook breakfast. And okay, and if she does, and if she, doing it. and if she does cook breakfast, it's at like ten o'clock at night when she's high. <laughs> All right, and she burns the she burns the uh, the bacon because it's not really you don't you don't do bacon well, babe. I'm sorry. Ooh. You need to learn how to cook bacon. You just like toss it around in there. It's got to be even. It's got to be up. great. Keep it oh. up. You do eggs keep, fairly well. Keep it Someone's up. sleeping on the couch. Keep it wow. Up. <laughs> it, it's not free speech Friday. Who's in the dog house? What? And what? Well, no, you you cook well. You, shut, you're a great cook. Your mouth. Just shut you don't your mouth. cook. You're you're no, you don't your do mouth. breakfast closer, ever. My point is, like maybe like once you cook breakfast. Okay, don't be telling so don't be telling the world sure that you're cooking me breakfast make sure all the time. Make you tune in to Seditious Sirens so you can see how I talk about how Rob is a misogynist. It's oh. and <laughs> he thinks little elves. <laughs> how how am I? What do I what do I do? What do, what, what do I do? Uh, well, go sweet. ahead, lay it all out. What, what, what do I do to you? Oh boy, you're sweet. I know I'm sweet. I'm you're lovable. Sweet. Yeah. This yeah. is how they are all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, fucking hot, makeup. cold, yes, no. <laughs> um, yeah, then no. We'll do it on this table. You know, when you look at the big picture, when you look at uh, everyone who lives in Manchester, not I'm not I'm not dogging on anyone here, but you the eighty twenty rule. That we've talked about before, Rob. Yeah. Twenty uh, percent yeah. of the people are doing eighty percent of the work, and I think everyone at this table right now is in the twenty percent. I think we're we're doing a lot. Yeah. You yeah. know. I mean, sometimes we're slacktivists, but we try. Well, I mean, I earn my slacktivism. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a huge slacktivist. Like yeah. I'll, I'll put a great idea out there, and, and I, then I, I, I would do here. it like last second. I moved here in the winter time, so I mean, I think I should get a lot of credit. For Did you <laughs> hashtag buy a jacket? Hey, <laughs> you know who else? You know who else moved here in the winter? Who? I did, like two a year and two weeks ago. Aww. Yeah. Well, by the way, it's my. I, I just passed my one year in the Shire. It's been uh, quite the journey. So. Yay! Yeah. Yay! It's like I can barely, I can barely even remember my, uh, my old life. We should have so. some sort of song for that, like Shire Choir song for one year in the Shire or Shire Versary, if you will. Like a birthday song. Yeah. Lose yourself to dance. <laughs> <laughs> for those, for the listeners at home, Shire dude loves lose yourself to dance. Oh my god, he has a problem with I it. Can't he, give me enough. He needs funk. therapy about it. Him and Rob don't ever do drugs in this house because they like to mess with you. So on drugs. he'll play that song like sixty times to see if we notice, and we won't because we're so high. I just put it on loop and, no, then, I, and then wait until <laughs> someone says something. <laughs> No, I, you know, sometimes I notice, but I'm like, you know, he likes doing it, so I'll just let him play that song <laughs> and all the I'll, time. I'll really like that song. And the if 20th someone time I hear it in a row, like, if someone's like stoned enough, you can just go next to him and just kind of like bob your head and move <laughs> around, and they'll get into it too. It's just <laughs> contagious. Shire dude is a great roommate. He, we've come home like so fucked up before. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh my. god. That other night. Yeah, oh my god. Were, yeah, the other night. They were they were doing naughty stuff in the living room, guys. <laughs> Straight up naughty stuff, and I'm just like, I'm just like in my robe in the kitchen, like cooking stuff, and I just like peek over, and I'm like, nope, not dealing with this. <laughs> Going back to the kitchen. I didn't like, know you saw us. We have a, <laughs> I didn't even. We were so. I don't even know. But I, I love that. I love that we can all just like be free enough to. Like yeah. Just be crazy, and it's probably like a Tuesday night. I don't even think it was the weekend. <laughs> no, it was definitely a weeknight. Yeah. Every day is a holiday. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, why wait till the weekend? Every day we. I, can I don't. Do I don't fun. understand this. Like, why wait till a specific moment in time for you to have fun? Oh, speaking of 420 Yolo Swag, swag Blaze it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be doing outreach uh, to head shops and uh, pretty much anywhere else that uh, sells any kind of drug paraphernalia or tobacco or anything like that. And we're going to uh, be doing this probably sometime in March. 
yeah. or end of March. We don't want to do it too soon because people will forget. So you want to do it like a couple weeks or like a month beforehand. Definitely. Right now, yeah, the 420 Foundation is like raising all the funds for like a sound system and flyers and I mean, hopefully t-shirts and stuff. This year, we're really gearing up nice and early. Yeah, so nice. we'd like the we're going to try and organize or at least get other people to come along or whatnot or just do it on yeah. your own. Hit as many head shops as you can with uh, with uh, 420 uh, flyers about the. Yeah. I really think it's gonna be big this year because mm-hmm. uh, the Stoner's cookbook, the Stoner's cookbook, uh, shared that piece. About the meme Rich with Paul. Rich Paul. With Rich Paul and wow. um, the the woman who. It went super viral. Her child. Uh, yeah, it, it got like that. Like yeah, it, it did really well. Yeah. He was like advertising on the like threads. Granted, it was Rich Paul alongside Casey Anthony, but you know, yeah, it was a little outdated. Anyway, um, yeah, more about the 420 rally. What we're gonna do after this. Anyone listening who's in the LRN.FM chat, um, who should we have on next as guests? Like, should it be Carlos's back of his head right there? He's <laughs> waving at you. Do you want I definitely want to have Carlos guest? back on uh, with Brett Vinat. I think that'd be a great duo. That'd be duo. a great duo. Um, another duo we're talking Make about it. is uh, Neocash Radio. Yeah, get Neocash, Darren. Get Darren and, uh, Tap and JJ. And JJ. Oh, my God. <laughs> Snap me at last underscore Dahlia. You're going to have to spell that for him. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we, what are we plugging? Quick. Well, I was just wondering if we should share our Snapchat names and get some interesting snaps from the uh, the chat room. Dick pics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nay. Nay. I'm, I'm all fine. I think what my Snapchat name is, so come find me. N-A-Y. Oh, you are already doing it. Kate. K-A-T-E. I need a Bobby. Oh, damn. Snapchat me some weird shit, you guys. I love it. Party file. I need a bobby pin. If you're an attractive female in the uh, LRN chat, Baby. you can add me. I'm V Rebel. Right, you are listening to the Rebel Love Show out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. And when we left, we were talking about the 420 rally coming up in Concord on 420. And we're talking about the activism that we're going to do before then. So we're going to hit up a bunch of head shops, correct? Yeah, man. And I also wanted to hit up college campuses. Yes. I've, that is also another great idea. Yeah. I was thinking, you remember uh, the activism, uh, the cop block activism we did where Anne walked down Elm Street with a sign? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We bring the, the sign back, except this time it says, you know, 420 with us or something like that. <gasps> and just walked to the college yes. campus like I'm that. I'm so down for Are that. Are you down for that? I'm yeah. Down. I'll, I'll do it. it. And of course, we're going to film well, all of this. Well, it's, yeah, this, this is just sirens, just, both yeah. of them there. When I do things like this, like, it's great because I feel like people always react so positively to me. Like, it's, it's people, like, even at the School Sucks Outreach, those kids could have hated us or they could have just, like, spat at us. But, like, they were really receptive to, like, what we were saying. Like, just for them to take the flyers and be excited about it was very cool because I expected a little uh, pushback. The reactions were really interesting at the school outreach. Um, like we had one kid who took a flyer for me and then crumpled it and ripped it up and threw it in the immediate trash can like right next to him. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah almost that immediately. But that was only one person out of, I don't know, I love the fact that one kid that didn't take it, he came back out of the school. Yeah, he ran back he out. He ran back it. out to grab a flyer curious. of his own. Yeah. Uh, but most of them, you know... Uh, of course, you know, I'm being really, really polite as I'm doing this because it's like, hey, I want you to take this flyer. So I'm like, hey, this is for you, bud. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. But less creepy. Channeling that my, sounded creepy. Well, just channeling my inner, <laughs> hey, my inner Derek J, you know, <laughs> like he's always really like polite when he does stuff boy. like that. <laughs> no. And, and this is why we can't have nice activisms because you say <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, most of these kids, uh, I, my favorite reaction though is they take it and then like a few steps o- away, they start laughing hysterically because they realize what the paper <laughs> says. <laughs> School yeah. sucks, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, four tw- how do you think college students are going to react to this? I think they would take it great because oh, let's be honest, what college kid doesn't like to smoke? Everybody. Yeah. I don't know one person that's like anti pot. And if they are, like, 
No, I don't know one person that's anti pop. Right. Yeah. 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 I haven't met I one. find it very useful to hand out the Know Your Rights flyers too. Do you guys have those out here? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That. That's that's another one we're going to do at the schools. At very the high school. Let's just for let's them just hand have. out all all the the propaganda. All the that's our goal. Let's we throw wanna, the cop block at them. Let's just do everything. Let's just like dump all like propaganda left and right. We want to get do that. all the propaganda from the queue and just like. Uh, the Rebel Love Show is building up its own uh, inventory of propaganda, madam. <laughs> we have an entire drawer, which anyway. has now been moved. Well, yeah, I have boxes of propaganda from yeah. back back in my uh, my days at Young Americans for Liberty when I had a chapter of that um, in Orange County, California. I brought you know all my old boxes of propaganda with me when I drove over here, so, so. I got a lot to get rid of. <laughs> that means just a lot of activism. Yeah, yeah. We didn't only we only touched the. Uh, the school outreach uh, oh, propaganda. We, you, you're like, oh, we're gonna need like two boxes of them. <laughs> can, like, I, can I talk <laughs> that about that? Is my, not gonna happen. My first experience, like here in the Shire, before I even moved, um, Rob took me cop blocking. So it was my <laughs> first cop block like experience. Kids, and, if you want a great date idea, take your date on a cop block of a DUI checkpoint. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, isn't that yeah. that's hot? Was, yes. Yeah, that turned was, me that's off. That's how I roll. It was hot. Danger. It was just like I don't know. Like we we're holding signs, and at first I didn't know like how to feel about it. It was really exciting, and people would stop and ask like, "What's the sign about?" And I'd like explain like why we felt like it was unconstitutional to do DUI checkpoints. And I don't know. They just like they really liked it. I don't know. People seem to be receptive to things if you say them in the right way. I guess. The and d- the go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, this is why. This, this is oh. why we can't have nice podcasts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, people were really receptive, and they were honking, and they were saying, thank you, thank you. And, like, I went back to school, and I talked about that. And I was telling people, like, how I felt and, like, the things that I learned, and they really liked that. And I just I felt really, like, grateful that day, and I wanted to do it again. And coming up here and doing like those cop blocks on Fridays, people yelling like, get a job. Like, I don't know that that's really what encouraged me to move. I got to like live the experience. Well, the, the cop block and during DUI checkpoints here in Manchester are incredible. Like it's first off, most of the people that you talk to with it are happy that you're actually there. It's like positive activism where like the general populace understands they don't want to get a ticket by the police. They don't want to be, they don't want their car detained and searched. You know, it's a, a po- very popular thing. Like when we're t- we're trying to just talk about where we, we walk down the street with you uh, and and uh, a sign saying checkpoint on bridge. And there's a video of it uh, as well, which you can find at but, More uh, More people in Manchester are familiar and friendly towards cop blockers than they are towards free staters. They know what cop blocking is. You don't have to explain it to them. And on top of that, like people that are not in the liberty mo- uh, community will see a checkpoint and come out and help. Like uh, they're, I've mm-hmm. met these people that they don't, they're not associated with anything like that. And they come out and help. It's amazing to see. And the reaction that most people have the cop blocking a DOI checkpoint, like they know what that means. They know what it is. Uh, it's, and, and the cops know what it is too. And it's just, it's amazing to see that here where, like, that would never happen back in Illinois. You're not going to see a bunch of people out in front of it because there's DUI checkpoints all the time all through Illinois. And no one would ever go in front of, a, a uh, you know, the checkpoint and try and divert traffic so that they weren't getting a, uh, a ticket. But that's a common uh, place thing that happens here in Manch. What's the reception to for Cop Lock like in Keene? Oh, they love us. The college kids... They'll recognize me in like convenience stores and be like, "Oh my god, that's so great! Thank you so much!" Like, <laughs> I've seen them refer to the Know Your Rights card as they're being detained, <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. <laughs> but I'll walk down the streets, and if there's like a party, someone will recognize me and be like, "Hey, aren't you a cop blocker? Get in here! Come rage with us!" <laughs> so I love it. That's awesome. It yeah, is awesome. College town. They they're bound to like it there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's. Unfortunately, well, I guess Manchester is kind of a college town with Snoo, but it doesn't feel like kind of. Snoo isn't Snoo technically is in Manchester. Right? Yeah, it's hooks it. Yeah, it's a lie. Snoo. They're lying Snoo's to you. A lie. Snoo. <laughs> Southern New Hampshire. SNHU. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Snoo. Yeah. Snoo. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, besides, besides the cop locking pumpkin. Oh, God. <laughs> Cute. What, what else do you like about living this life? Well, how about. I, I told you my first experience of yeah. why I wanted to come 
um, to the Shire. What was all of you guys' like point where you were like, I definitely want to pack up and move? Derek J's victimless crime spree. Same for me. We have talked about this on this show <laughs> so many times with you sitting right there watching. We've talked about this in front of you, babe. <laughs> well, we're having a. Co- you still can tell. Hey, we're live. We we're talking to other I people. Know, exactly. I know. I know. Other people are curious. Yeah. Just I told you. I, I told them. You guys, mine. Tell me yours, babe. Like <sighs> Jesus. Hey. I, you, I just wanted to go off. On aren't you, you guys I'm jelly? Sorry, I'm I got sorry. to watch Derek J's victimless crime spree go down pretty much live every time. That's true. <sighs> That's insane. Yeah. Ah, oh, it was awesome. Yeah, and you know Cecilia, she actually filmed some of that movie. Like some of that's her footage. Cecilin. I didn't know that. Cecilin, yeah. Cecilin, good, you, good Cecilin. videography there. <laughs> All right, when we get back, we'll have some. I'll make it up to Anne. And back. hopefully, the Cessation Sirens get 200 likes. Yes, get them some likes for me. Hashtag <laughs> Yeah, without Derek J's victimless crime spree, uh, that w- that's what triggered my move. That's what triggered Rob's move. There, we wouldn't be here. That's what triggered Anne's move without too, that move. Yeah, too. no, yeah. seriously, like I, I signed the intent to move after victimless crime spree, like I really did. True story. I, was, like, I, don't, I know. No. No. You no. I love how you're saying that as I'm hearing Derek J's victimless crime spree commercial <laughs> play in my <laughs> headphones. Ian, Ian says there'd be no seditious sirens either. either Everyone get in the orange hat. Uh, there's probably not anyone uh, watching right now who hasn't seen Derek J's victimless oh, crime spree. Oh, but if you haven't, you can go to victimlesscrimespree.com. Or find it on YouTube. It's free on YouTube. Totally free. And there's so many hater comments. <laughs> All right, we are back broadcasting live from Manchester, New Hampshire. And for the those listening at home and not watching our YouTube feed at uh, rebelofshow.com slash watch, you would have seen nothing but the Rebel Mistress and... She was getting down yeah, just now, she yeah. She was tearing it up to the, <laughs> the, the, Shire, the bumpers. I love Shire Dude's music choices. Thank yeah, you. Shire Dude came up with the bumpers to this uh, to we, the show we for all of us. We all sat around and gave it the yay or nay. Yes. We're a yeah. good team. Yeah, un- unfortunately, the people watching on YouTube can't hear the bumpers. Yeah, but we'll we're going to fix fixed. that, oh, I swear, yeah. by next we'll show. We'll have that fixed by next show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're watching at YouTube. She's just dancing to like nothing, so it probably <laughs> looks like really crazy. It's like a maniac. <laughs> yeah, dude. But if you were listening to both at the same time, you'd see her doing it, so. Uh, speaking of, let's talk about the seditious sirens. <gasps> yeah, that's kind of why yeah. you're on the show to begin with. Oh, really? I uh, thought it was because we were pretty. <laughs> that yeah. too. That too. Oh, okay. oh yeah. thanks, guys. Everyone's gonna be like, "You guys are a mouthpiece for the Rebel Love Show." And I'm gonna be like, "That's for, okay." Well, all right. That's kind of true. All right. All right. Talk live. First off, no, I'm not. let me <laughs> let me say let me lay this out right here right now on the table, and lever it. Is not by any ways, shape, or form uh, the mouthpiece for me or anything like that. She is not the Josie Wales, the Larkin Rose. Not that either one of us or anyone of those people. I'm just saying that I'm not the not to say that she is the mouthpiece for. What about Larkin. the Rebel Mistress? <laughs> the Rebel Mistress. I'm sorry. You you. Were, <laughs> face you were, right now. It's cool. We're all getting used to it. <laughs> the Rebel Mistress is not the mouthpiece for Rob Rebel. So anyway, you're asking <laughs> about um, I just wanted to see the that. origins <laughs> of the seditious siren. Yes, where where did it come so, from? What happened? Like, How did this come I'm to be? I'm gonna start off. Um, I Renee was here long before I was, and I knew who Renee was. Um, which is scary. Yeah, she said it was scary, but I was like, I know who you are. You're like the prophet's girlfriend. So like, coming into this, <laughs> the prophet peace be upon. So, so coming into this, though, I hadn't met any of these people. Uh, I had watched their uh, YouTube shows and podcasts uh, when Rob was on there, and we were like still, you know, freshly dating. So I had seen all these people, but 
it was like you guys were on TV to me. So all you guys were like celebritarians. So I had like a fangasm the first time oh I God. seen Derek J. And it was just like I had knew who some of these people were and who the prophet was. And then so I knew who Renee was. And I was like, oh, she's cool. She cool. Yeah, I was like, she's really cool. I didn't. It's I didn't, true. I cool. Yeah. You're pretty cool. I cool. And yeah, I, and I didn't know there was going to be anyone like, it's weird, like, because there's people here kind of all ages. And, like, when I was, I met Renee and Keen, and I was, like, hanging out with, like, um, oh, I don't want to say older, but the older women in the liberty movement got it going on, so I can't wait to be one of them. Um, so I was, like, <laughs> hanging out with them, and then I had seen Renee um, at the bonfire that night yeah that? we were at the keenvention bonfire is that, and is that the first time you guys met yes yeah. yep wow. that was the first i time. i saw her drinking an angry orchard and i'm like oh my goodness it, i love that it's and a keenvention miracle oh <laughs> it's a keenvention miracle and i walked up to her and i'm like hey where can i find me one of those and she's like oh they're mine here you go and i'm like cool and i'm like wait, wait aren't you rob's girlfriend and she goes Hell no, he's an asshole. We broke up, blah blah blah, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they, LOL. they were broken up at Keenvention. Yeah, but, yeah, they but, broke up. But, for no, like no, no, no. But it was another Keenvention miracle <laughs> because there was this little thing called uh, the uh, Halloween dance party. There was which I'm in North in which uh, myself and uh, my rebel mistress uh, we. Uh, that's when we decided that what we we should not have been broken up. Anymore. Which was the next day. Hashtag Keen Vincent Miracle. No, we <laughs> we didn't break up that day before. We broke. No, no, up no. Like we, it was a couple. It was like two weeks before yeah, that. Yeah, it was like two weeks before that. Yeah. Well, whatever. It had me but confused it, as all hell. Yeah, she was confused because then he was uh, since we're airing business with uh, um, <laughs> old girl at the time, as I recall. Lol. Um, oh man. Yeah. So yeah. Every, yeah. Don't you stop. <laughs> we just stopped to figure that. Out. Every. <laughs> Everyone was like a little confused at Keenvention, but it was like a midsummer night's dream. Everyone ended up with who they were supposed to be but with. But they went totally full mansion keen. Hashtag full mansion. Oh yeah, it definitely went full <laughs> mansion. Hashtag full mansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, we brought the mansion. There was yeah. underwear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That we had five people in a room at Keenvention in my room, and there was a pair of underwear that was left, and no one knows where the underwear came from, and no one fessed up to it. They were manuals. <laughs> why? Wait, wait, why? <laughs> wait, why was a manual in our room? And why? I yes, don't think and why is underwear, underwear in our room? <laughs> in our room. <laughs> I, I, what, what was going on? You'll have I was to watch. There. Well, uh, to, to hear the origin of the underwear story, you'll have to watch uh, episode nine of Shire Dude, which is at shiredude.com. And episode <laughs> 10 is going to reveal Who's the owner of the underwear. You and I know, actually. In that long? Well, it's it's the finale Dude. of the season. So no, it's going to be give big. Him Not shit. cool, man. We've been waiting. Yeah. You know, sh watching Shire Dude episodes are, is like a. a uh, bong trip or a mushroom trip or whatever you want to say and every time every episode you watch it's just like it's crazier and crazier yeah. and now I'm at this like I don't know what whose is it I don't know I've been waiting like it feels like an entire Shire year since the it's last Shire, Shire year, episode yeah. came out yeah yeah. you know you need to release it episode 10 is going to have green Actually, screen stuff Shire it's going to be amazing back to seditious seditious sirens yeah. I think yeah, Shire this is about us, us damn it I know God so this it. started with Angry Orchard I think yeah it started yeah. with uh, so New Hampshire Dude, um, that's what we do. We get drunk and come up with great ideas. Exactly. <laughs> that's and how Sedition Simon started. We looked at each other. We're drunk. And Rob's like, you guys should do something. And we're like, yeah, let's do something. And I was like, seriously, <laughs> yeah, we should. That's like, such a all, good idea. And it all started with that Angry Orchard. Because I say my my philosophy is um, always share the drugs. Right. Always. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like she, she wasn't drinking. She needed a drink. I supply. Like, uh, that's how you make friends. Share your drugs. It is. Yeah. So how did you guys come up with Seditious Sirens? Oh, well, that was funny because w after that, we I didn't know if we were gonna, it was going to start or not. So I, I was like, well, the first step is just taking a step. So I just wrote Renee and I was like, here are my ideas. Like, I really think we should do this. Like, blah, blah, blah. Not knowing she was going to say. Um, I don't know. She wrote back like a day later and was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. do this. And then we started brainstorming names and we had some other ones at first that yeah, we were thinking about. Yeah, well, I was like, all right, there was once there was once a show called Voluntarist Vixens, and there was once a show called Sedition is Sexy. So I put the two together, Sedition with some alliteration, Seditious Sirens, because we are indeed sirens. sirens. 
and we're seditious sirens, so yeah, you know? yeah. No, I'm I'm down for it. I'm so down for the struggle. We we immediately um fell in love with that, and then I mean, Rob didn't think we should um air um that soon, but I just thought we should just go for it because even if the first episodes were bad, we keep getting better. We're allowed you, to no, make no, exactly. Well, okay. Even if, okay. even if you off. look at the Simpsons, like when they first came out, horrible sh- like the animation in that, but Awful. look at them now. So Same we thought we should guy. just. We oh. thought we should hey, just go we're for we're it. thirty plus episodes into this, and it's still horrible. So. <laughs> 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 It's All right. <laughs> well, you you made it to Free Talk Live. You made it to the to, to the big oh, time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I actually downloaded the first season of Free Talk Live once, and it's <laughs> very different. It's a very different show. Way, I've never way back gone then. back to with Man Witch. Yeah, it was weird. It was a weird <laughs> show back then. I wouldn't have listened to it. it was, you know. Yeah. Now it's a great. I'm now it's show. fantastic because yeah. we got so much experience under their belts. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll get there one day. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, you definitely will. That's I think the you're spirit. Great. That's one of the reasons <laughs> I fell for you. You're a very passionate man. Oh. You go after what you want. Everybody right. say, oh. That's why I got you, babe. Yeah. So exactly. speaking of passion, uh, what's what's next for like Seditious Sirens? Are you guys going to bring on more guests or more well, sirens? Well, next is our tri- trip to um, IS- ISFLC. And and we're we, going we to really DC. plan on making connections there. Um, I've already been talking to some people that I met at the Boston conference about maybe getting some women together and um, talking about what liberty means to them and making a video, but I'll go get back to that. And business cards, we'll commercials. About, yeah, we're we'll talk about commercials and ISFLC. And get Because sedition is sexy. What's going on? I'm just reading the chat. Oh, yeah. I love on the... Ian talked about liking Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Der- Derek posted, oh, the, not the Josie to like. It says, ha yeah. always share the drugs. Put that on my gravestone. <laughs> oh, no, I love Josie Wales. I'm just saying that she, her reputation is that she's a mouthpiece of Larkin Rose. Okay, you know, I might actually want to bring that back up because that's, I think, unfair. Thank you. Fine, we can bring that back up, and I will clarify that I don't believe that. All right. I believe everything that Josie says. Okay, okay. I'm just yeah. saying that's a stereotype. All right. And they should have done things differently. Okay, we'll talk about Larkin it. Larkin should not have been uh, that you. All right. <laughs> I'll explain it. <laughs> we'll open with that. It is. <laughs> I think we should open with it, and then I should get really angry at you and uh, storm out. And storm out? And then come back for my Coca Cola. Yeah, we can't have that stage. We can't do a staged FTL. Uh, Not yet. No, we got. We got to get. It's that. too soon. It's too soon to pull Mark Edge. <laughs> Go full Mark. <laughs> Go full Mark. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome to watch live and sitting in the kitchen. You saw that oh, live? No Dude, way. I was in the kitchen. I'm listening, and I just hear Mark scream, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" He's really pissing him off, and I'm just like, "Oh my god, Dave, shut the fuck up! You're being an asshole!" And Mark comes in, he's like, ah, and I'm like. What's wrong? And he's like, your boyfriend's a fucking dick. And I was like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of Mark. <laughs> I know. I'm listening to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> his peppy voice is on the commercial. We went to Starbucks. Liberty on the Rocks. Guys, I started a chapter of Liberty on the Rocks in Orange County, and it's still going strong. Actually, I just found it today. They're having Adam Kokesh uh, speak at uh, Bottle Logic, this brewery that we went to, this really cool new brewery in, uh, have, oh, that, oh, in Anaheim. I got the invite for that. Is that happening like next week or whatnot? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, just uh, Facebook.com slash I spoke at yeah. this, this meetup before yeah. about the Free State Project. <laughs> I, was, I was walking through Shire <laughs> D's footsteps.
All right, we are back. This is the Rebel Love Show broadcasting on LRN.FM. We are a once-week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, and we're going to open up this segment because apparently I need to talk about what I just said about Josie Wales and Larkin Rose. Yeah, yeah. man. Okay, so you were talking about Josie Wales being a mouthpiece of Larkin Rose, okay. and you're referring to the video that you did about Pork Fest. Yeah, well, it's it, uh, all right. First off, I don't believe this about Josie Wales at all. I've met her. She's a great person. I don't believe her to be any kind of shape or form a mouthpiece of Larkin Rose. That being said, I understand why people think that. I mean... If you watched Larkin, the video and I've, you had met heard, Josie, I remember, I'd, I'd understand you coming away with I that. I remember hearing an interview with Larkin Rose on uh, Mike Salvi's World where he was saying how he's going to make Josie Wales into a YouTuber. This is like before uh, Josie the Outlaw came out, before she did YouTube. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, the Pork Fest video where Larkin Rose is just standing in the background, like looking over Josie as she's like talking uh, crap about the FSP. All right. Um, that is why, like, she has a perception of being that. I don't believe that, though. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I don't believe that. If you'd never heard of Josie the Outlaw before seeing the video, and you, most people have heard of Larkin Rose in the movement, yes. it, it looks like Larkin Rose, like, hired some pretty face to talk for him yes. and say his opinions for him. I, but then after meeting Selfie, I mean Josie, <laughs> Selfie. you realize she's a wonderful individual. She has her own ideas in her head. And, and she takes wonderful selfies. She's and she does take great selfies. Yeah, she's yeah. really pretty. We miss you, Josie. Yeah, come back to the Shire. Yeah, we love you. But anywho, uh, yeah, no, she uh, she's definitely not, but I understand why she has that uh, perception, which I don't agree with, but I understand it. And also, Anne is not uh, my Josie. <clears throat> rebel mistress. Okay. <clears throat> rebel mistress. Definitely not. Just the love well, of she, No, Anne's my rebel mistress. Don't get me wrong. She is definitely my rebel <laughs> what mistress. What were we talking about? But she is not, she is the, not the equivalent break? of my Josie. What was <laughs> I know, you I guys were talking about ISFLC. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we're gonna be at ISFLC, and we're gonna in hopes mm. make a video, and we want to do things like that. Like we really want to do fun, exciting things. Like, like we said, like criticize us all you would like, but we're growing in the movement, and we're gonna document it. And, and that's and that's a Valentine's Day, right? Is it International Students for Liberty Conference? Yeah, but you yeah. know, so same, appropriate. Every day is Valentine's Day. So for us, if so. you are in or near Mordor, and you want to come hang out with some. Uh, <laughs> District of Criminals. Yeah, if you want to hang out with us, come come down to ISFLC. What come party hotel up with are we us. staying in? I don't know. Anyone you you got to talk to old girl for that one. Well, we well, don't even know where we're going, and we're leaving on Tuesday. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, we're leaving Thursday. Oh. Well, Friday morning. See, I've, I've actually have never traveled the East Coast. I've never uh, – the only the only travel I've done in the East Coast has been like pretty much limited to New Hampshire-ish. Uh, went to Maine a little bit, gone down the Mass to Boston. I've been to Vermont. So I've gone up to the Lakes region, gone to Keene, but and gone to the Free Coast. But I haven't like gone farther than that. So yeah. this is gonna be my first trek, like going like Ugh. south through New yeah, York and along the along the coast and whatnot. I've never, yeah, I've never done it. It'll be interesting. <laughs> It'll definitely be interesting. So um, definitely meet us. We'll all be there, and we're going to have a great time, guys, because if one thing libertarians know how to do is party. Also, you would make Carla Mora's day if you come to ISFLC and sign the intent to move at the FSP table that all of us will be at at some point trying to get signers to move here. Those student <laughs> conferences are just ripe with people who want to sign the statement of intent. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. well, I mean, you have to be kind of young at heart to believe that uh, we can actually stop statism. So, young at heart. I mean, do you think it's kind of like, um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Young at heart. What yeah. does that even mean? Yeah. What do you mean can by you, like, that? Elaborate on that. Well, usually, most people as they get older, they just don't care about anything, and That's if they true. do, they're like, you know, they're just stuck in their ways, as if like, okay, this is just how things are. There's nothing you can do to change it. Um, they however, lose hope. Yeah, here there's hope. Yeah. And if for you to have hope, you kind of have to, you know, it's usually people who are younger that believe that they can actually do something. Yeah, I believe it's, it starts, I think it's our generation that needs to start seeing things for what they are. And that's the only way anything's ever going to change. Well, that or if... Uh, the zombie apocalypse, I'm rooting for that. First, I refuse to be jaded. I refuse. To be jaded? I refuse to be jaded. I will always be excited and I will always be passionate about liberty and stuff. Well, same same for me. Well, don't worry. I can understand why some people kind of like they get down this far 
and then they uh they're like all right there's no hope and they like they leave i get that i don't agree with it like for me i couldn't i couldn't just like turn away and walk away from this like there's no way like i don't know how how people do i I feel like what you know yeah exactly and i feel like some people aren't they aren't fully grasping what it means to be free and what we're actually fighting for and well, that's why they don't make it. Honestly, if you if you're leaving here like burned out, whatever, I'm hearing that way too much. Like you came here for a purpose. Like you're forgetting that purpose. That's why you're leaving. Well, believe me, I can't understand why some people get burnt out. Like no, there's, I mean, I don't out. do I don't do nearly I enough as I think I should be. As a cop out. All right, tough question for each of you guys. Uh, well, I want each of you to answer the same question: Is the Shire your final like stopping point? Like, is are you going to just stay here forever or? Do you I, think there could I, be another like bastion of liberty in the, in the I future? I couldn't see I myself it. leaving. I mean, no matter what happens, I even if like, I mean, the only way I would leave is some like major event happens, some major destruction, the zombie apocalypse, something like that, or I'd go to you know Cuba and flee from the country. Like that's the only way I can think that I want to leave because I love my life here and I would like every day is. Like, great new amazing exciting day where i feel free and i gain more freedom if we ran where would we run to exactly yeah. <laughs> like well, this is the safest place for libertarians i think i would say this is the safest place in the world because if anything US. happens this is where i want to be you want to be with those who think like you exactly yes. and the only way i would leave is is if i was forced to leave it would be some sort of event where i was forced to leave of course, I have heard libertarians uh, tout the, uh, uh, oh, we have legal pot here in uh, Colorado. That's their big thing. Oh, yeah. But, oh, New Hampshire's great for this, this, and this. The 101 you know Reasons legal. film. Fuck off. I don't but know we have legal pot. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's so ridiculous. You can nullify that law by saying, hey, Ann, can you pass the bong yeah, right now? Right. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, see, you could just nullify it. Like, you could just smoke pot anyway, right? Smoke it anyway. That's yeah. what we're going to do with the 420 rally. That's what we will be doing at the yeah, 420 right. Like, Well, that's another thing. Like, Well, for me, just to backtrack for a second, uh, I wouldn't be, I, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't be in the country anymore if the FSP didn't exist. If this community here in New Hampshire didn't exist, I, I wouldn't have a reason to stay. This is like the only reason that I'm still living in this country. Uh, is because of this community here. That's the only reason why I'm in New Hampshire is for this community. Are you going to move to Somalia? No, no. <laughs> uh, if I ever did leave the country, I, I've kind of had a fond uh, place in my heart, I guess, for Belize. I don't know. I like Belize. I would, I would move there. Well, Why? Apparently there's Anarchapulco or something uh, going on like that. No, no. I, I'd, I'd go farther south. That's not f- south far. That's I not don't far, know. So. Berwick's, Berwick's kind of a looker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's got Angel Clark down there too. Yeah, he's got Angel Clark. I like Angel Clark. But, yeah, uh, she's doing good down there. So yeah, here. yeah. I, yeah, I, I read I her Facebook too. posts and stuff. She seems to be having fun. Yeah, I don't know. English goes pretty. Uh, mo- everyone speaks English in Belize. You know, Spanish is spoken as well. Dollar you know, money goes far away. Very slow population. Speaking know. of Facebook posts, real fast, I wanted to ask Anne about uh, why you don't share your liberty in the classroom experiences more. <laughs> Because I know, like, Marcel took this, like, uh, politics class, and he was sharing his experiences with, like, telling the class about anarchy and, like, Sandra Spooner. And, like, there are these really great Facebook statuses coming out of, like, his it's Facebook. It's great, and it's I so much know. fun. Do like, it more often. I, I love see to see what happens when I kind of just, like, I, I love school. I love to learn. Um, and the great thing about my school is they're not telling me anything. They're, like, just stating information, and I take that how I want. So, um... I love to ask questions and get my class to think about things. You rile the them up. I do. Yeah. I do. Um, so if we're talking about something, we're talking about child labor. Do we think there should be laws on child labor, uh, sweatshops, that kind of thing? And most people who aren't awake or haven't had these thoughts of liberty um, aren't thinking along the lines of, you know, yes, I, su- I support sweatshops. They think that's a bad thing. So I just say I do support sweatshops uh, a lot of the times that's the only way that that child's eating at night um is if you buy this product so boycotting it m- while it may help your conscience is not helping like the person and just like things like that i'll say things like that and it's just like they'll be really receptive to it they'll say I'll, i've never thought about it that way before and even the teacher will be like thank you if we talk about government's role in business, I'll ask. I hear you, babe. 
Well, anyways, we're heading. This is the end of the Rebel Love Show. First on uh, first broadcast on LRN.FM. Go over to Re- uh, RebelLoveShow.com and peace. No, you gotta say ShireDude.com. Oh yeah, hey guys, go to ShireDude.com. Make sure you right. like that. And we're out. <laughs> Send peace. me all your notes. <laughs>